Now, one of our assumptions with the kinetic theory is that ideal gases contain a large number of molecules, all moving with a variety of speeds in random directions. Let's see how that works using the FET simulation one more time. We'll start by injecting a single heavy species or a single large molecule into the chamber. And we'll see right away that it has an average velocity that never changes because it's perfect collisions with the walls and it's not gaining energy or losing energy as it travels around the chamber. Now if I suddenly inject a second particle into the mix, we'll just have two going at the exact same speed all of the time. Now these two particles fire around in the chamber, perfectly colliding with the walls elastically, but they're going to come there's going to come a point where they actually strike one another. And when these two particles strike one another, there's going to be a transfer of momentum. Now we know momentum has to be conserved, but one of them might slow down and one of them might speed up to maintain that conservation of momentum. Now let's just be patient and we'll see how long that takes in this sim. There we go. So we had one collision, it barely altered the velocity of each of the particles. We didn't in fact see it. There we go again, another collision. Now it looks like one's got a little bit higher speed than the other. And you can see now our graph is spread out. We have one particle at a slower speed and one particle at a higher speed. And you can imagine that if I inject a few more particles into the mix, the odds of collisions and transferring of momentum increases substantially. Until eventually you get kind of a distribution of speeds as these particles collide with each other inside this chamber. But on average, most of the particles will end up maintaining a speed that the original particle had. So because momentum is conserved, we'll get some particles slower, some particles faster, but on average, most of them will be with what the original speed was. Let's pump in a whole bunch and we'll see what happens to our statistical average. Notice the graph starts to smooth out. We get even more at the higher end, even more at the lower end. But again, on average, most of them are in that same region. Pump some more in, and our graph gets even, even better. Now let's look at this another way. I'm going to reset the simulation, get rid of all our molecules. This time, what we're going to do is turn off molecular collisions which is ridiculous, of course, because one of the assumptions with the kinetic theory is that they collide elastically. But let's see what happens when they don't collide at all. So I'll inject a whole bunch of molecules into our chamber, and they'll all start hitting the, the walls and whatnot. But because they're not colliding with each other, they all maintain one steady speed. So obviously the average is, is the exact speed that they entered the chamber with. But as soon as I turn on the collisions, they start to transfer momentum with one another and our Maxwell distribution, our statistical distribution starts to reappear. Some molecules slow down because of the collisions, some speed up, but again on average most of them stay with their original speed. Now let's see what happens when we inject two types of particles into our chamber. Now I'm going to start by turning off the collision feature. There's no collisions into our chamber, so we'll start by pumping in some heavy particles at roughly 300k. And because there's no collisions, which is obviously unrealistic, they're just going to maintain their average all together at one steady speed. Now we're going to pump in some light particles, but we're going to give these a, a temp temperature of 1000k. And if I do that, we'll get a situation that looks like this. And if we change the way our graphs look so that we can see the heavy molecules given by the blue line and the light molecules given by the red line, the top graph just shows, shows the superposition of those two lines. And of course, you get a perfect separation because there's absolutely no collisions. However, if we start to collide together, immediately we see this Maxwell distribution. Even the lighter ones will start to slow down. The heavier ones will start to slow down. Some will start to speed up as a result of the collisions. But on average, if we superimpose our blue and our red, we'll get our overall Maxwell distribution as shown by the black on the top. 